Hunter! Help! I can't get off! What's going on, everyone? It's the Nesco. Welcome back to Spyro, Year of the Dragon. In the last episode, we took down one of the more long and slow and boring levels, and now it's time to do an interesting level. Uh, it's kind of... I'm kind of hesitant to say that because this is a dark and depressing looking level. In fact, it's so dark and depressing, there's death in the water. Come on. One of you needs to jump up. So I'm not... Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's piranhas in all of the water in this level. So please don't go swimming. You're going to die. And also, the characters here. They speak in a uh, very specific rhyming pattern. See if you can figure it out. That gator was mean. I thought I was a gunner. Thanks for saving me. Haiku. Oh, 575. It's really, like, out of nowhere, this level shows up, and you're just thinking, poetry? But why? Where did that gem come from? Anyway, let's talk about this level. Spooky Swamp. It's got 500 gems, 6 eggs, go figure, just like the other levels. And if you ever get hurt, look for some crawdads. This is kind of a Bayou-esque level. If we're talking difficulty, to get a 100%, this is not hard at all. More, it's annoying. There is one minigame in particular that I'm thinking of, but if we're talking difficulty, it's... it's... I don't know, it's crab's legs. I, I, I don't even know. A little tough, but easy to get through. Ha! <laughs> Crab's legs. Those enemies there on the bridge, the the mosquito ones, the giant mosquitoes, I guess you call them? They're really weird. Some other enemies in the game do this too. It's like, when you are shown an enemy that can fly on like a specific platform, it, it, the camera angle changes. And it's just so daunting because those mosquitoes, as soon as the camera angle changes, they will attack you. And it's... I don't want to keep saying it's weird, but it's actually kind of hard to get them your first shot. Unless you're me and you get them every single time, you know. There are giant tea lamps all around this bayou spooky swamp, whatever you want to call it. You don't have to, it's not required to beat the level. But if you're a completionist like me, playing this game for fun, you're going to want to light them, because you can get an entrance to an egg later, and... Okay. Yeah, watch your jumps here. They're uh, falling into the water. Not fun. See, this dragon should have done Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Why not save it for his actual name? Oh, whatever. And these guys, they shoot bullets at you with a slingshot. Why not? Oh, well, it is a kid's game, so I don't know. A gun might not have been so, uh, so good. Look at these gators. <laughs> They're biting each other's tails. I, I can just see the wheels spinning in their heads, and the gerbil suddenly got tired. And then they ate the gerbil. I don't know how that would work. It's a subconscious metaphor. Actually, now that I think about it, I read somewhere that in this level, there is one gem that can possibly not be obtained. I think this is one of the only levels where a glitch so bad happens in this level that you can't get 100%. It's only been recognized in the PAL version, so sorry Europeans, you get screwed again. But there's actually a gem that cannot be detected or gotten. So you're not getting 100% if you can't find that one gem, unless you hack the game. That is pathetic. You think they would have tested this game a bit more? All right, something funny about money bags. I can see him off in the distance. There he is. Uh, he speaks in haiku as well. This door is jammed shut. Only the power of gems can hope to move it. Hopefully, it'll shut you up too. Haiku, beautiful poetry, and yeah, your poetry stinks. Beautiful poetry, not good as talking. You've made a wise choice. It will mean more eggs for you and more gems for me. Best of all, Spyro, I can stop speaking haiku. What a sweet relief. No kidding, money bags. Funny thing about this specific money bags, you can get around without having to pay him. You have to swim through the water, and you might need to require the next Sparks upgrade to actually get it. 
But I think it's possible, at the way you are now, to swim all the way here. Because you have a little bit of time before you are able to take damage again. I completely blank on what that's called, but you have some time before you're hit again, so you could technically swim all the way around and not have to pay. I have no idea what that would do to the ending of the game. It would probably completely destroy everything when going for 100%, but it would be kind of fun just to, you know, fool around with the game. And we're at the end. You are brave, dragon. Much braver than I by far. Here, take this darn egg. You almost said a swore? I was gonna tell on Thelonious! There's only like one name that comes to mind, and that's from the first Shrek movie. <laughs> like, I can't think of anything else. Just from that scene. <laughs> Where on earth did they get Thelonious? Uh, how are you doing? The tea lamps are lit. Now I'll tell you the secret of what's in this house. Okay. A creepy wizard lives inside but hates the light. He has awoken. He swore to destroy whoever lights the tea lamps. Better you than me. I love how it's basically telling you that this is a kind of a bayou, outback, wood swamp. That guy's name was Bubba. And by the way, these guys are giant fireflies. Here we have a mini-boss fight. It is not difficult in the slightest. His bombs actually kind of home in on him. If you hit it in his general direction, chances are it's going to hit him. This pattern will be repeated until he's done. The bombs don't change in, in how short their fuses are. He doesn't change the number of gators he sends after you. This is it. What you don't want to do is go up and charge or flame him because there are piranhas in the water, just like the rest of the level. Really? This is kind of a... I wouldn't say it's a pathetic mini-boss fight. More, it's, it's a little bit of variety. I honestly kind of like it. But yeah, this boss is pretty pathetic. Herbie! You're not a car! Nor are you owned by Disney. Now for the annoying part of the level. Sheila. Not that she's annoying, more that her part of this level is annoying. It is trial and error. This swamp smells so sweet. The springtime trees are fragrant. I'm off to kick butt. Uh, still speaking the haiku. Stop it! Well, at least hers was kind of funny. This section takes so long your first time. As mentioned before, it's trial and error. I don't like this section. I do not approve. We have the bombs here. We must destroy the egg cage. But we just go boom. Kangaroo can help. You can clear the pass for us. Will Sheila help us? Yeah, sure, whatever, Four Eyes. Not like I have a choice. Freestyle haiku. Pfft. Yes, it's bombing time. Here I come, my little eggs, to free you at last. All right, you see those big glasses those fireflies are wearing? They are blind. Or I should say they have really bad eyesight. You need to clear the path for these fireflies to take the bomb from point A to point B to unleash a dragon egg. In theory, pretty good idea. The part that comes in that's not so fun, they keep changing their course. This one will mainly stay on the main path, but know that he'll veer off every now and again. And trial and error, man. It's never fun. He keeps just moving on to different paths, and you never know what he's going to take. Oh, wait. No, no! Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Why? I could never remember. Stupid trial and error making me feel this mission, but it'll happen again. Once more with feeling. Thankfully, the pattern does not change for however many times you do it. So as soon as you figure out which path he's going to, it'll never change, and it'll be a lot easier to do. And the first one is more the beginner style. I guess you'd say there's an easy path and a hard path. This would be considered the easy path because he mainly uses the uh, pathway here. 
thankfully, it's over. And now for the second one. Second one's not fun. Peggy, settle up the car, get Hank and Bobby. We're going on a vacation. One egg cage remains. Will you now help my brother to freeze the last egg? No, unless you give me a beer. Where's Hank Hill? If you clear my path, I can blow up the egg cage. Poor, poor captive eggs. Who names their firefly Busan? No more haiku, please. All right, he says the exact same thing. This one is agonizing. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just mean. He swerves like he honestly is blind. Oh, oh my god. No, come back. No. Oh, see what I mean. See what I mean. Stupid firefly. One more time. Let's try this again. This took me a while to do as a kid, just because, you know, I would always think, oh, he's going to go for this one. No, he's not. This one goes on a much more sporadic route. He will actually go behind this little, uh, just giant lamp, I guess you'd call it. He goes all the way around, and he actually retreads old ground. So if you pounded down a mushroom, or if you broke a rock, and by the way, they respawn and reset after a small amount of time, it can be very, very annoying. But there we go, we are done. Second egg unleashed. Oh, Michelle and Michael. If we were in France, they'd sound exactly the same. The eggs are all free. Two dragons are born today. Sheila's my hero. I really wish I could, like, kick you. Like that. Stupid fireflies. I'm gonna take your glasses. Give him a Spyro. He'd look a lot better in them. Of course, he wouldn't be able to see. There are plenty of gems in here, and I just noticed that as soon as you're done with this uh, little section here and saving the eggs, it takes you back to a regular over-the-shoulder view. Quote-unquote, over-the-shoulder. It's no longer top-down. I think I know why they did that. It's because some of the gems are underneath the trees to where you can't see them. And also, it would be really hard to come into this section and figure out that this is up here. Yeah, since this is a Sheila section, she will always have a place up in the balcony section that you need to collect. There are only two that I know of. I mean, uh, two of these little alcoves here where you have to do that. There is one out in the open. So you want to be out and uh, looking for that. There aren't too many gems that are scattered that I can think of, so let's actually talk about this particular section. Believe it or not, just like any other of the levels that have a, a separate character that you can play as, if you come into this level, into this specific level, while beating Sheila's Alp, but not actually saving her, so if you glitch your way into the level or what have you, when you come to this part of the level, her sign will be blank. Instead of saying the regular message like, hey, I'm still captured, blah, 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 it will actually be blank. And I think that is absolutely terrifying. When something doesn't work in my game, I get scared. That's probably why creepypastas don't sit well with me, even though half of them are really, really stupid. There are only a few more gems left, and oh, I see it. Yeah, be on the lookout. That is really easy to miss, because once you come in here, you have already passed by it. So on your way back, check all the walls, check everything for cracks. And that gem right there that you saw in the cage, how do we get to it? Well, here's the beauty of this level. Keep in mind where that was, and take a look at the back wall. Now it's not there. Now it's not there, and it's not there. It must blend in, right? How about this wall? Yeah, here we go. There's your 25 gem for the level. I believe there's another one we can get. It's not like there's a specific number of gems, just as long as it equals the number it needs. I'm not sure if I've missed any. Let me take a look around. Oh, wait. Aha! I saw it. There we go. We are all done with this section, thankfully. And if I've timed this right, I think this section took up half the video. That's how long it is. The rest of the gems in this level are actually on the treetops. I don't know about you, but I love levels where as soon as you get to the end, there's a whole nother, like, top layer that you can go to, and I really like that, especially in the Spyro games. It seems like almost every single game has that secondary layer. 
So you'll be on the ground floor and you can get everything on there, but then there's even more level to get. And all the way over here? Yeah! Hey, Frankie! Get a load of this purple dragon coming into our barn! Yeah, why didn't you go and kick his ass? Go on, kick his ass! There's all the eggs, and right here, just a... <laughs> I don't know if this is the game dev, uh, dev's way of saying, Hey, you came all this way for one gem. But at least they give you the key and an egg to make up for it. That's gotta be cruel. Like, I would hate to be a game designer! Okay, I made it. I made it. I'm good. I would hate to be a game designer and be in charge of putting that one gem there. It's like, guys, do we really want to put this one gem here? I mean, there's really no point. Just do it, man. Okay, 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 whatever. Two more, there it is. We are all done. As soon as you light all the tea lamps, they thought ahead, thankfully. And by the way, just for a little uh, skill point to add to your repertoire, destroy all the piranha signs. At least I think that's what it is. But right here, there's a whirlwind, easy way to get back to the end of the level, and that's for lighting the tea lamps and finishing the level. So a little reward for being a completionist. And we left the level with exactly the same amount of gems we came in with. Money bags, you cheapskate. I can't believe it, but we've only got one level left in this homeworld. It's like flown by. I mean, we still have the speedway. We'll, we'll get to that later. So next time on Spyro Year of the Dragon, we're going to be hitting up the Bamboo Terrace. Got a bit of China influence. I like it. I like my cultured games. I'll see you guys next time.